Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking through problems with masses hanging from a pulley. So if we take a look at a very simplistic system over here, if you have a pulley with two masses attached and they're either held in equilibrium or they're starting to accelerate or something, there's actually a fair amount of physics understanding in that. And this is definitely used in AP physics and it's also used in higher level regular physics problems as well. So we are going to be talking about this. The technical name for this is called an Atwood's machine. This is a diagram of this guy George Atwood's pulley device and I'm going to talk you through the exact strategies you need to know to be able to solve these types of problems. So let's go ahead and get to it. I do want to mention at the start of this we're going to assume that we have a massless pulley. This is common in a lot of problems that are just dealing with Atwood's machines and pulleys and getting you used to these kinds of things. And the string is treated as massless. This pulley right here is treated as massless as well. So there's no rotational inertia going on. That makes things more complex. What's really crucial here in terms of skills is to understand the tension of the string is constant. So this tension that M2 is experiencing that the string pulls on it with is the same tension that M1 is experiencing that is pulling through the string over here from M2. That's because of Newton's third law. For a reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So in a way, you could think of these problems as an extension or an application of tension style problems. I've put together screencasts on tension. I could put a link up to the first one in the series up in the upper right right about now. But I will show you everything you need to know to be able to solve these problems. So let's go ahead and get to it. So we're saying these are our strategies. You're going to draw free body diagrams of objects, decide on a rotational positive and negative direction. And then you're going to use the sum of the forces strategy for each object and solve for tension for each equation and set the tensions equal using multiple equations. So I will talk you through all of this. First of all, we will draw a free body diagram of the first object. And notice that your tension is going to be drawn as a bigger or a longer arrow than the force due to gravity on the first object. And that's because I'm just assuming, I haven't given you numbers for this, I just made up this example problem here, but I'm assuming that M2 is going to be more massive than M1. So they start from rest, but essentially this is going to rotate downwards for M2 and upwards for M1 during some time interval. And one of the things we're going to do at the beginning is we're going to decide on a rotational positive and negative direction. In other words, instead of just saying we're going to look at the forces in the y-axis, what we can do is think about what are the forces in the clockwise axis or the counterclockwise axis. It's a little different way of thinking about these things, but if we do that hard work up front, it actually makes the problem way easier later on. So let's start by doing that. We're going to call this direction positive because we're going to assume that's the direction of the motion and it will make the problem easier. So let's then go ahead and use the sum of the forces strategy for each object. So the sum of the forces on object one. So we're looking at this object over here. It's got a tension pulling up. We're going to treat that as a positive value because it's going to cause this clockwise motion. And we're going to call this FG1 a negative value because it would cause a counterclockwise acceleration. So that's why we have a positive sign over here, negative sign over here. The second line for the sum of the forces strategy is just mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law. So we're saying the sum of the forces is literally equal to the sum of the forces and the sum of the forces is also equal to mass times acceleration, which is Newton's second law. Then we take these two lines and we set them equal to each other, and we say, well, tension minus the force due to gravity on the first object is equal to mass one times acceleration. And if we solve for tension, so our next part of this whole strategy is to solve for tension, and if we do that, we end up with tension is equal to this in terms of our variables from the first object. All right, well, let's go ahead and essentially do something very similar, but for the second object, pay close attention here because it's going to get a little tricky. So this right here is our free body diagram for the second object. When we go to make this positive or negative, in this case, because this force due to gravity 2 going down would cause a clockwise rotation that would be pulling down, which we're going to consider that to be a positive. So this is different than what we did for the first object, and it's different for what we do for a lot of problems. In this case, this clockwise rotation that would be caused is going to be considered to be a positive value. 
and the tension in this case is going to be considered to be a negative value. So let me show you what that looks like. The sum of the forces on the second object is equal to a positive force due to gravity. Positive force due to gravity on the second object plus a negative tension on the second object because that negative tension would be representing a negative counterclockwise motion or acceleration that would be caused if this was the only force operating here. And then the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is just m times a. So in this case it's m2 we're talking about. We set those equal to each other and we say all right let's go ahead and solve for tension and we end up with tension here in terms of our variables for the second object. So now we've got tension in terms of the first object, and that is up here. We've got tension in terms of the second object, and that is right here. What we're going to do is essentially set them equal to each other, and that's what we're doing right here. All right, so we've got them set equal to each other. Notice I haven't actually given you any numbers with this problem, and that's because I'm teaching you a method to be able to tackle pretty much all of these problems here. You can use these strategies to tackle these problems. And what we're going to do is look for our unknown. So a little help on that one. Our unknown in this case will be acceleration. Typically at this point we don't know what the acceleration is, so let's go ahead and isolate for that. Notice I've got acceleration over here. And over here so I'll just bring my unknown over to the left side and my known values off to the right side and isolate start to isolate in that way so I've got my two a values on the left and everything else on the right so I'm gonna go ahead and factor out an a and a G and again I'm trying to isolate for a so then I just end up with this as my answer for what the acceleration of these objects are and that's how you would approach it now don't go away, I do want to show you an alternative way of approaching this that if you understand what you're doing can actually be easier. So first of all, you're going to treat, if you're going to do this as an alternative strategy, you're going to treat the free body diagrams of both objects as one system. And we can do that because the system is whatever we are interested in. So if we're interested in just one object, then that's fine. If we're interested in more than one object, that's fine too, because it's our system. We decide what our system is going to be. And we're going to go ahead and solve for the acceleration of the system. So let me show you how to go about doing this. In this case, we're going to consider the two major forces that are causing rotation here. The two major forces are going to be the force due to gravity of two, which is treated as positive because that's going to rotate in a clockwise direction. If it was able to, it would accelerate in the clockwise direction. And this force over here would cause acceleration in the counterclockwise direction. So we're going to call that a negative value. Now the second line for the sum of the forces strategy is going to be to just write the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And that is still true, it's just that in this case we're talking about the total mass of the system would be the mass of the first object plus the mass of the second object. And if we make that modification we can use this strategy. Then we set the two lines equal to each other and you end up with this. And again if we're looking for acceleration we can start to isolate in a similar way to what we did before. And we end up continuing because I ran out of room there but that was the last line and we end up with the exact same answer as what we had before. So hopefully this has been helpful. I've done screencast on all of the major topics for a regular or an honors physics class throughout the year. I've also done a lot of topics in AP physics as well. So if you want to take a look at the playlist, go for it. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.